Hi there, welcome to another video of mine. Today I bring you the Leica M6, a camera that I made a video some time ago, a year ago or something to be precise. And um, I have this camera for a year and a half and uh, I wasn't really, you know, too thrilled about it because I how can I put this? Uh, I felt that the responsibility of, of uh, owning a camera, like a camera, was really too big. Most great photographers shoot great, you know, photographies uh, with uh, Leica, especially the M series and the screw mount bodies, the rangefinder ones. Um, and so owning this was I always view it as a great responsibility, really. Um, it's like giving you a tool, the exact same tool as, uh, well, Sebastian Salgado, for instance, and then go out and make the same pictures. And of course, uh, I can't because I am no photographer. I am just uh, uh, a guy who likes to take pictures and um, to have some cameras and to talk about cameras, film cameras, and that's about it. And so I never really uh, got myself into buying one, also because I couldn't and I can't. Um, I never, to tell the truth, ever held a Leica M camera in my hands until I got this one. And this one arrived by the mail. Because uh, somehow I felt that I'd better stay away from them because I might just like them and it would be a problem because I could not afford to uh, buy them. Or by one of them. So, in the last, to be honest, this year, at the beginning of 2014, um, I promised myself I would use the like more and try to get rid of some prejudice that I had about the camera. Uh, because if I liked the Koenig XR, which is basically the same with a motor, why couldn't I like something that has a slightly better viewfinder even which is outstanding and um, and so why not using it and you know that besides the the complex of um, having to to get results first class results from it i also felt always when i used the, the like on the street like someone was watching me, uh, I was also afraid of getting mugged, robbed. Um, and so I had a hard time, you know, getting all these things processed. And when I did, and I started to focus on picture taking, because this is a camera, then things started to, um, you know, improve a lot. And I started to like the camera a lot. I really enjoyed the, um, the magnificent viewfinder and so I even took it and, and I take it to areas of my city where normally it's not advisable to take expensive uh, gear but again nobody knows what a Leica is so it's pretty safe perhaps it, if you said a Canon or a Nikon or something like that or Sony <laughs> I would get mugged more easily. Um, so today I'm here to share these thoughts with you. I will not share my photographs with you because um, there's no point in it. The Leica being uh, an, inter an interchangeable lens uh, rangefinder camera. So this one is uses only uh, Koenig or uh, Voigtlander lenses. And so um, quality is what it is because I don't have uh, money to buy um, Leica lenses and to be quite honest I am very happy with the quality that I've got with uh, these lenses from the Koenig XR. Now, <clears throat> I think I'm going to present the camera for those of you who are not familiar with it and um, this set um, it's almost a confession, so you can see that I am a complicated guy regarding 
cameras and not only cameras, but I am also um, flexible enough to understand uh, that not all things uh, are what they appear to be, especially uh, on the spur of the moment. So the Leica M6 is uh, from a long lineage of M cameras, which is, except for the M5, are basically the same model, the same chassis, with small modifications. And this one is the TTL version, meaning that it can read the light, uh, meter the light for the flash uh, through the lens. This was an improvement, but hardly uh, really uh, an adequate improvement for uh, a camera of this. This is not a camera for studio, it's not really a camera that is made to use a flash, so, but it's here anyway, if you need it. This, uh, if I had to pay a lot of money, which I didn't, like, I don't know if I've mentioned, but this cost me a fraction, the body, uh, of what it would normally have cost me. But if I had to buy this new, it is exactly as, uh, as I, I would buy it. It's black, I like black cameras. But there is a catch, the black finish on these Leicas is really poor. It, wear out, it wears out really quick, um, it's prone to scratches, um, it starts to look terrible. It came like this, this is none of my, my doing. Uh, but anyhow, I think the camera deserved a better finish, um, perhaps one day. I think there is a person in Japan or something like that that uh, repaints these cameras in uh, a superb black uh, animal, something like that. Uh, and I think really the camera deserves it because it is finished with real leather. And so um, it's something that um, it's out of sync with the rest of the camera. This is an all mechanical camera, meaning that the camera does not need batteries to operate. However, the batteries are here and uh, it takes two LR 1.45 volts batteries just to uh, power the meter. The meter, by the way, does not have an on and off button uh, on the camera, but it is here on the um, shutter dial. Also B, I think, acts as uh, off, but you have off written. If, and it is guaranteed that if you forget um, to put the shutter in the off position, uh, next time you pick up the camera, probably it, the batteries will be flat. I think there is some battery drainage going on here. I don't know if it's a problem on this one, but I think it's general. Um, so also regarding the um, meter, the meter will only work if you have the cock the if you have cocked the shutter. If the shutter is not cocked, the meter will not work. Um, inside you'll see two arrows in the center and a circle, meaning that when the circle is um, as lightened uh, up, it means that the exposure is correct. So this is a very simple uh, exposure system, but it works a treat, it is very precise. Uh, for me, having a meter in a mechanical camera, it's not really a must. So if you find one of these with a non-working meter, it's not the end of the world. At least it shouldn't be. The camera is um, silent. This is a focal plane shutter, so it's not a leaf shutter. What is a leaf shutter? Leaf shutter is something like this. This is the Canon head. When you fire, you see something open and closing inside. The lens, that's the shutter between the lens. The Leica uses a shutter just like an SLR. Let me pick just one that I have lying here. So 
two curtains that travel horizontally from one side to the other, exposing the film. Coming back to the Leica, I forgot I had film inside. It's a demo film, it's not, but I will have to rewind it because I want to show you how it is uh, loaded. This is the rewind crank and it's actually rewinding the film. And you open the camera just like this. There is a door. Now, this is not the door you are uh, used to seeing a camera for loading the film. There is no huge uh, inch door and you load the film exactly as the drawing uh, illustrates. It, some people say it's um, it's not fast, it's this, it's that. I also uh, thought that, but it's not true. Of course, uh, other cameras might be faster, but it's not time consuming. So you just have to waste a little bit of film and that's it. Just introduce the cartridge, pull the film's tongue into this slot, just like this. Okay. Um, and then Let's just shoot. The film is moving. So just close the door. The bottom, I mean, <laughs> and the door here. And as you can see from the rewind crank, you are all set to go. Here you have the uh, setting for you have to push down a bit for the meter, and this is the PC socket for the Flash Studio or something like that. The best of the camera is what you can see. It's a magnificent viewfinder. It's Clear, clear, crystal clear. It's fantastic. Um, it has the uh, frames for uh, the lenses that you are most likely to uh, to use, because, like I told you, uh, like M6 can I'm sorry accept other types of lenses other than the 50 millimeter. So this one. It is by Konica and this one is also by Konica. It is the 28 millimeter lens. If I look inside, now I don't see any frames. There is just this big, huge viewfinder um, with a frame because this model is the point 58, uh, the viewfinder, I mean. So it is um, a model that is suitable for wide angles. Uh, normal like M6 cameras with a magnification of 0.72 I think um, um, are adequate up to 35 millimeter uh, I think so this one is exactly <laughs> as I would like it to be because I am a wide-angle fanatic um, but in case you want to um, to see other types of um, to preview how the frames because this is a, not a real image viewfinder there are frames that tell you what will be inside the image there is this this lever here as you move it it calls um, other frames for other focal lengths of the of lenses so um, when I put the 50 millimeter now I will have a rectangular somewhere in the middle of the viewfinder just to indicate me that whatever is inside corresponds to the viewpoint of this lens. So this camera is unsuitable for um, tele lenses because I will have this very very little little frame at the middle of the viewfinder 
and it makes impossible composition, uh, you know, intelligent composition impossible. So this is this model, the point fifty eight, is uh, really for wide angles, and it's for me. <laughs> I normally, uh, I normally never go beyond fifty millimeter in a camera, and this one I don't have any lenses for it. I will not buy it. Uh, any other because um, 50 mil is already in my limit so I like um, wide angles I also have this one from Voigtlander it is screw mount and what is screw mount? screw mount is the old system that Leica used on before World War 2 and also after um, and so it's uh, it's called L39, and so it's 39 millimeters in diameter, L for like a uh, register, so the distance between lens and focal plane. Um, and so they are called L39 lenses, and you can use modern lenses on old cameras. This white lens made by Cosina can work with this Zorki. But the best of all is that this Zorki, this Russian lens, this Industar 22, it's a collapsible lens, can work with the uh, Leica M6, with metering, with focusing, with everything, with 100% compatibility with this adapter. So, the Leica M6 can work with old lenses from Leica, of course, as well, from Russian, from old lenses from Canon, uh, Nikon, and modern lenses from Voigtlander, for instance, and other manufacturers that have popped out uh, since then. So, the camera is versatile because you can use uh, many types of glass, some expensive, others really cheap, like this one. And you might ask, why would I use um, Russian glass on this? Well, it's a way to uh, know if the, um, the glass is good or not, because you have this great viewfinder, you have this super um, accurate uh, rangefinder system, and so it's really uh, pleasant to use the camera. Uh, and as you don't see through the lens, even if the lens is is not uh, really a bright lens or fast lens, um, you can make the best of it. So let's remove the lens, and uh, this is the original Zorki Five it came from. Of course, the reverse, meaning that putting an, a an M bayonet mount lens onto a screw mount body is not possible. So this system is more or less like the M42 system. Um, you can attach M42 lenses into K-mount bodies, for instance, or Yashica contacts mount bodies uh, and use them with adapters but the reverse is not uh, true so you see that um, it's uh, really um, nice to have a camera that um, can accept lens that were made uh, so many years ago some lenses more than 70 years ago and can be used on, on the uh, Leica M6 without any problem. And of course you can use also modern lenses. And you have, like I said, cheap or expensive glass. Of course it makes sense if you have a, a Leica it makes sense to have a Leica lens, but uh, unfortunately 
I don't have the money for that. And so uh, my M6 has to do with the lenses that I've got for my uh, Koenig uh, XR RF or the screw mount lenses from the Russians of this Voigtlander. Now, I really, uh, to end this video, um, I really like uh, the Leica uh, and the concept of um, that's behind because uh, many people pick up this camera for instance and say this is a poor man's Leica and I'm sorry I beg to disagree it is not it is an outstanding little camera but it was never meant to be a Leica it was not designed to compete with Leica this was a family uh, camera it's a very nicely styled compact uh, gifted with uh, a superb lens, but it doesn't really have any DNA, doesn't share any of the Leica's uh, concept. Uh, th there's nothing Leica about it, so it's not a poor man's uh, Leica, it's not. Um, from what I've experienced, it seems that, uh, for instance, the fact that you have to cock the shutter in order to have the uh, meter uh, working is a way of training you to get your sensors uh, in alert. This camera demands you to be in constant alert because you, you don't have autofocus, you don't have auto exposure. And so um, the minute you take the picture you immediately have to advance the film, otherwise next time perhaps you pick up the camera and put it into your eye into the viewfinder you might not get the picture because you haven't caught the shutter you didn't take a reading uh, and so you have and I, this is what I feel I always have the um, the lens uh, closer more or less in the distance in meters that I usually uh, that I usually work so that if I want to range focus, um, to use the range fo focus system, uh, range finder focusing system, sorry, um, it doesn't take too much time, it's quick. Or, uh, so you have to be able to guess, estimate a bit, because you can take pictures just by um, calculating the distance from the camera to your subject. Um, and so, also, when you are changing scenery, and there is a light, and the light is changing a bit, so you must be in constant, constant uh, alert with your apertures as well. Um, so this camera demands that you know a thing or two about photography in technical terms. And this might come to uh, a shock, because I must admit, and I think I've already said that in my uh, other videos, I my first camera was aperture priority. It was already an electronic camera. So I'm not from the generation that uh, had mechanical cameras. And so now with digital and um, everything completely even more automatic, this camera is really a shock because it's bare bones. It's minim minimalist uh, and so, so, so minimalistic that um, of course it's dated, it has to be dated, but it also has one advantage, you cannot be sedated when using this camera. You have to be alert, you have to know uh, how to count, you have to know, <laughs> and this might sound stupid, but it isn't. Most people don't know how to judge distance, either in feet or in meters, from here to there. And so you have to develop those, those instincts um, you have to get the, the camera ready. You know that you have to cock the shutter when you take a, a picture because uh, there is no motor that's going to do it uh, for you. So, um, with this camera, this camera ships you up a bit. <laughs> uh, of course, the same can be said of an SLR, uh, a manual mechanical SLR. Well, it's true in the same way. But this one is um, it's smaller, it's more 
handy. It's complete. It's um, the concept is uh, I th I think an SLR it's a camera that takes more time to than this one. Um, I really think this is one of the main advantages of the uh, like uh, M series and this one, uh, as I don't have any experience with others, uh, is that it you have really have to be on the lookout. So you have to be prepared. You have to play with the uh, preview of the frames if you want to change the lens because you might just want to have a look how it would be with a 50mm, for instance. That's something that you can't do with an SLR, except if it is fitted with a zoom. And so um, I like that part because it uh, stimulates a part of me that I thought it was long gone and forgotten. And I must admit that at the very beginning it is awkward for someone who is uh, who was uh, introduced to the world of photography with uh, an electronic camera. It, it of course it feels odd. You are, you expect the camera to focus. You expect the camera to advance the film for you. You expect everything, and it's the other way around. It's the camera that expects something from you, and so you are much more in. There's a, a communion, if you want, not in the religious term, um, but there is a communion between, between you and the camera, much rather like a motorcycle, if you have ever ridden a, a motorbike. Um, a motorbike is very different from a car. From a car you are isolated from the world, it has power steering, it has automatic transmission, it does uh, auto this and uh, this and that and this system and auto this. And so you are never fully aware of the danger because the car uh, minimizes that for you. Um, you don't have to work hard to go through a bend. And this is like a motorcycle. You have to work with it to give you its very best. And if you work against this, which is not being prepared, uh, and expecting everything to be done for you, then you're done for it. <laughs> you're in for a, a nasty surprise. And I think the beauty of this camera and this, this type of, uh, of cameras, perhaps this is not the only one, is that you really have to be in sync with the camera. And uh, I, I remember I had, I still have, uh, my first uh, autofocus camera was the, the Nikon F70 and it was very uh, result oriented orientated. I, I liked the results but I never felt involved with the camera I always said that the camera was clinical you know it made it made the job uh, perfectly it was perfect in technical terms the pictures came out superb but I never felt that I was part of them you know I don't really don't know how to explain this with a Leica M6 or something of the kind, you are uh, expected to be part of the picture as well, not just the camera, because um, you have to do some work with it. And once you have uh, understood this, I think you can be great friends with the um, Leica M6, just like I am now. Well. This is a long video and I think I've already uh, talked too much for today. Um, I just wanted to um, give you this small update on uh, the Leica M6, a camera that I really wasn't that impressed um, a year and a half ago, but now I really like it. Uh, for the reasons that I have just explained. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you very soon in another video of mine.